Hi, my name is Gabe and I am very lucky to be at Kobe Academy. I had the pleasure of speaking at the breakfast last year with my father and I have the pleasure of welcoming you to the breakfast this year. I'm happy to share this week I reached one year of sobriety and I couldn't have done it without you guys and Kobe Academy behind me. On behalf of my classmates, the staff and I, I would like to thank you for coming to the third annual breakfast virtually. We are so very happy that you are able to attend and hear from our speaker, Ann Baum, and be able to learn more about our school. In the year and a half that I've been here at Colby, I've felt welcomed and loved by each and every member of the staff and every other student and our counselors. I've grown a lot, matured a lot, and learned a great deal about myself. As I am ready to graduate in June, I am proud to say that with the help of Colby, I have earned four scholarships and have been accepted to five different schools. My decision is to master in music production and media production at Northampton Community College and then take it from there. I know Colby has prepared me enough to be able to go on to this next step in life and I can't wait to come back and help them as well. I want to thank you again for joining us today for our virtual breakfast. My classmates and I have a great pleasure being able to be part of this. Without people like you and support from you guys, we wouldn't be able to be where we are today. With such a small school and such a small staff, I would still say that we're one of the strongest little forces out there. And moving forward, I would now like to introduce our principal, Mr. John Petrozelli. Thank you, good morning, thank you, Gabe. Uh, we're so pleased that you can be with us today, um, coming live from my office here at school. So I uh, appreciate your time this morning. Obviously, uh, if you were here last year, you heard Gabe's amazing story with his dad, so you can understand how proud we are of Gabe. And it was really exciting to surprise him last Friday with a, a breakfast with his Colby family, with his real family, to celebrate that one year of sobriety. And uh, just amazing things happening here at Colby, and Gabe is just one of the examples. So uh, we know how extremely hard he's worked. So let me add my words of welcome. Thank you uh, for being here. Thank you for joining us for our third annual Business Leaders Breakfast. We're grateful that you've taken some time this morning to join us. Um, I need to apologize again this year. 
Um, if you were with us last year, you uh, know I promised you a delicious breakfast this morning. Um, I assured you that we would be here and we'd have lots of great things to eat. Well, I hope you cooked this morning because that's your breakfast because we're not uh, in person, as you know. But uh, that's not going to stop us from having an incredible, an incredible morning. Uh, but I will make this promise, and I probably shouldn't do this, but we will be live next year. We're going to give you a great breakfast uh, in uh, May of 2022 for the fourth annual breakfast. And if not, um, I'm going to make sure that my awesome admin, Darlene, delivers breakfast to everybody that signs up. So Darlene, fill the gas tank up just in case, because that's what we'll do for next year. In fact, I think she just walked by my office and slammed my door. Um, I don't know, something's going on out here. Uh, let, I'm not sure what happened, but I'm gonna move on. So thank you for uh, attending. Obviously, uh, we would love to be in person, but that's not gonna stop us. We have a great program planned. Um, you'll hear from Pete, one of our students, talking about his recovery journey with his mom. You're gonna hear from two of our uh, great volunteers, Brian and Wendy Calamar, uh, and they're going to talk about why they are uh, involved with Colby. You're going to hear from one of our incredible teachers, Winnie Houck, uh, who is going to talk about um, the... Um, I'm sorry, we have a little technical difficulty on my end over here. Um, oh my gosh, we have a special guest. <laughs> they're knocking on my door, and it's because our, our great bishop, Bishop Schlert, is here. I'm going to give him the seat. <laughs> bishop, hop right on in there. Thanks for coming. I don't have my mask on. <laughs> That's okay. We're, we're vaccinated. Good. Hi, everyone. Good morning. It's so nice to join you. I'm sorry it's virtually, as John was saying. Uh, I was really looking forward to the breakfast this year, but uh, it looks like, though, John, we can maybe plan on one for next year. Absolutely. Things are looking very good. And uh, I just want to thank everyone who's on the, uh, the Zoom today, uh, especially those of our business community, for your support and, um, and your interest in Colby Academy, because uh, it truly is uh, a gem, uh, certainly here in the Lehigh Valley, but in our Diocese of Allentown, because it 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 really is so uh, so consequential to the mission um, of our diocese to reach out and to bring the light of Christ to every individual. And, you know, the church has always taught that, um, you know, the, the person, the human person has an inherent dignity. And um, it is because of that dignity that um, we just uh, are so grateful to be able to uh, carry out this mission and so many others that we do. So I, I just want to thank you all for um, your uh, your partnerships with us and um, with your interest in us and with the, the support that that you give Colby Academy because it truly is something uh, that is um, just spectacular in our community and I'm, I'm so proud that. Um, of our staff, of Mr. Petrozelli, of the of the faculty, uh, and of our students and our, our parents who support our students, because it is a concerted effort with God's grace, and we're so grateful to be able to bring it forward. So uh, with that, I, I could just begin with a little uh, opening prayer, and then I'll turn it back over to, I guess it's you, John, right? Okay. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-loving God, we ask you to be with us at the very beginning of this day, to bless all of our efforts today, that we might work in conformity with your divine will for us, so that we might truly be about your presence in this world and bring your light to those we meet this day. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you again, everyone, and uh, enjoy the virtual breakfast. Oh, yeah. Thanks. Can I listen to the talk? Oh, absolutely. Sure. One of the things we've learned at Colby Academy in two years is the key word around here is flexibility. So when the <laughs> boss shows up, you give them the screen. I had no idea it was coming. So we're thrilled. Bishop, thank you for being here. They're knocking on my door and I'm thinking, I'm going to, what are they doing? Now I understand why. So Bishop, we are so pleased you're here. And um, what an incredible leader we have for our diocese. You know, at a time when schools across our country are closing, 
you know, our great bishop had the courage to say, let's open a brand new school and let's let's do one that's not really traditional. So thank you, Bishop. So as I mentioned, we have some really great speakers um, and our keynote, we can't wait to hear from Ann Baum from Capital Blue Cross. So thank you uh, to all of our speakers. You know, this event is, is made possible because of very generous support uh, from so many wonderful sponsors. I do wanna take a minute just to, to let everybody know who is supporting us and why we're able to do this. First and foremost, thank you so much to uh, the Topper Family Foundation, our, our great friends, Joe and Maureen Topper. Um, they're our lead sponsor, our Phoenix sponsor for the second year in a row. Um, we, are, we just can't uh, thank them enough for not only sharing our vision and believing in our mission, uh, but being partners and believing in us. So to Joe and Maureen and the entire family and the foundation, we're so grateful. Our gold sponsors um, have um, each contributed $1,000 today to our breakfast and to our, our, community, or to our school community. Um, we are so grateful to um, Alloy 5, Michael Metzger, uh, a three-time sponsor. They've sponsored all three of our breakfasts. To Boyle Construction, Sean uh, Boyle and his team. Uh, to our actually last year's great keynote speaker, Tony DeRay and BSI Corporate Benefits. Thank you, Tony. Um, Rebecca Free Thornburg from Can Do Kids. Um, she's doing great work in speech therapy. Thank you for supporting us. Our keynote speaker, Anne, and Capital Blue, they've been uh, really uh, supportive of us over the years. Uh, Joe Juliana and J.M. Juliana and Associates, LLC, a three-time sponsor. Thank you to Joe. Mars, Greg Kraus and his great team at Mid-Atlantic Rehabilitation Services, a three-year sponsor, and our partners here providing the drug and alcohol counseling for our students. Um, Northampton Catholic War Veterans, Post 454. Thank you uh, to Bruce Shellock and, and his great men that are involved with the Veterans Post. Uh, Serve Restaurant, Spencer Cobb. Thank you to Spencer. He's a first time sponsor this year. Um, and to our, our great friend and board member, Mark Schenk, a three time sponsor with Tiber Medical. So thank you to all of our gold sponsors. Um, you also see on your screen um, our great friends that are silver sponsors. Thank you to that great group of people. I would like to point out three time sponsors, uh, Apgar Oil. Thank you to uh, uh, Jane and Jim over at Apgar, to the Basama family, a three time sponsor. Thank you to Mike and his wonderful, wonderful wife, Denise. And Fax Management, our great friend here, not only at Colby, but throughout our diocesan school system, Marianne Caliguire. So thank you to our silver sponsors. And certainly last but not least, our bronze sponsor. Thank you to that great group of people, community members, and a three-time sponsor in that group. Thank you to Anita Pakovitz and the Children's Home of Easton. Um, again, we could not do this and all the wonderful things that we do here at Colby without their support. Um, so thank you to uh, all of them. You know, we're, we're in our second year and it's been so exciting. You know, you know COVID hit and has really cause craziness uh, throughout the country, right? But we have just plugged along and we're continuing to do um, some really great things. And I, I wanna share a little bit about that. You know, despite COVID, I think we've been able to maintain a really vibrant school community. Um, the, we continue to do outreach in, in practical and safe ways. Um, we're, we're a very proud member of the Greater Lehigh Valley Chamber of Commerce. We continue to make contacts throughout the, the community with partnerships at places like St. Luke's and, and uh, Oasis Community Center and the Reach Lehigh Valley uh, Community Center. And people have come to us and said, hey, let us know a little bit about you. And that's what today's all about. We wanna continue to share some of the things we've done. You know, one of the proudest moments I have had in 33 years of education was last July when we had our first graduation. We had two students um, walk across our gym floor and receive their diplomas from our bishop. And I'm happy to tell you that of those two graduates are continuing to do well today. Joel is uh, just completed his freshman year at East Stroudsburg University. He's been on the Dean's List both semesters. And Trent um, uh, actually came back for a fifth year of high school to uh, be, be our inaugural student in our community 
our, our career awareness program. And this year, Trent has been all over the Lehigh Valley working with electricians and plumbers and auto mechanics. And yesterday he was with a surveying crew learning about uh, what it means to survey and go out to commercial properties. So he's had a wonderful year of learning um, after graduating. And that's a program we hope to continue uh, you know, as we get more students that are interested in the trades. This year, you know, we have been open five days a week since August, in-person learning every day, providing the support and, and the counseling that our students need and really want. Um, they love the fact that uh, they could be here, they can be here every day despite COVID. And again, taking the necessary COVID precautions, we've been able to be open every day, which has been so key to their success and so key to what we're doing here. Um, we have really opened up, I think, the world and the community to our students. You know, we, we were able to um, take them to the Philadelphia Art Museum and the Allentown Art Museum. They've been involved in a movie shoot with Danny Robach, one of our board members. They're going to be in uh, be extras in one of his movies coming out soon. Um, we've gone go-karting and fishing, and we've had a, a, an award-winning chef from the show Chopped on the Food Network, Chef Eliza, do a virtual cooking class um, with our students. Um, it's just been amazing. We, we have a, a plot in the uh, Monocacy Farm Community Garden right here on campus, and our students have been tending that garden so that we can grow vegetables uh, to donate this summer to Catholic Charities of Allentown for their food kitchen. So I, I really think that the opportunities our students are getting and being able to become um, involved in our community and see things and, and experience things that maybe they wouldn't have been able to uh, at another school has been a key to the success of their program and their recovery journey. So, you know, our belief here is that the opposite of addiction is not sobriety, it's connection. And the opportunity for us to connect our students and our school with so many wonderful people in the community is a key to the success of what we're doing here. And when we're able to do that, the success is not just the staffs, but it's the community. So my hope today for everyone here, um, what I hope, you know, whether you've been here before, whether you've been at one of our breakfasts before, I hope that um, you'll enjoy the morning and you'll wanna become part of our school family as you learn more about us. I hope you'll consider sharing our story and our mission to others that you know, whether it's work colleagues, whether it's friends, it's family members, um, and perhaps you'll consider partnering with us uh, if you're not doing that already. Um, the more the merrier, the more people we can have supporting our students, the better it is for them. As I have said many times, addiction doesn't just affect the person who's addicted, it affects the family and the community. And it's a community disease. And together we can break that stigma that still haunts so many people, so many families, because they're afraid to let people know what's happening. Um, and we wanna be a part of those people's lives so that we can help those students on their recovery journey. So as a new school, um, we would not be successful without wonderful people with, like you, key friends along the way that we've met. Um, and our keynote speaker today has become a, a really special Colby friend. Um, Ann Baum has attended our first two business leaders breakfasts um, the last two years. And I remember candidly, I don't know if Ann remembers this, but after our first business leaders breakfast, at the end of that breakfast, Ann and I had the opportunity uh, to chat. It was the first time I had met Ann. And I remember her asking me very poignant questions about our program and how we were going to support our students. We hadn't even opened up yet. It was still May uh, before the summer we opened. And I remember her asking me questions about the program and how we were gonna support our students, uh, talking about athletics and you know, uh, allowing that to happen for our students uh, as, a, as a key component of their recovery journey as, uh, you know, uh, healthy coping skills. And, and I want you to know, I thought about that. We have continued to think about that. Um, and that conversation has certainly played a part in what we're doing here. So um, we're so happy that you have graciously accepted to be the keynote. Um, when I spoke with Ann a couple of weeks ago, she suggested I, I do a really short and sweet introduction. Um, so here goes Ann. Ann is a really, really nice lady who has done really, really nice things in the community. Okay, Ann, take it away. No, seriously, uh, Ann might not talk if that was really the bio that I gave her. So, uh, but if you don't know Ann, she is a wonderful, wonderful person in the, in the Lehigh Valley community. She is 
um, the Lehigh Valley Market President and Vice President, Producer and Labor Relations for Capital Blue Cross. She leads the network of over 5,500 producers and is responsible for the plan's organized labor customers. Um, she is involved with strategic planning, operations, partnership development, community relations, corporate giving, sales, and account management. Um, and on top of all that, she's involved in various boards. And we might need to talk about the Colby board at some point. Um, she has received numerous awards, including Pennsylvania's Best 50 Women in Business. Um, and I know just very recently, um, the Girl Scouts honored her with the LEAD Award, so that's wonderful. Um, Anne earned her BS in Biology from the University of Illinois Champaign-Urbana um, and her MS in Health Systems Management from Rush University in Chicago. Uh, I found this very intriguing. She is certified by the Protocol School of Washington as a protocol and etiquette consultant. And I think we need to have you have a little talk with some of our students here about etiquette and <laughs> what forks to use, washing their dishes when they're done after lunch. Um, and she's the author of Small Mistakes, Big Consequences. So, and thank you for being here. I know we're all uh, really excited to hear what you have to say. So I'm finally gonna be quiet and turn my video off and we're gonna hear from you. Well, thank you so much, John, and I really appreciate the introduction. I liked the first one, though, that just short and sweet one, but thank you so much. And it is a great honor to be asked to offer this, uh, to offer remarks to this group. And I really appreciate all the work that Colby Academy is doing. So I'm looking forward to speaking with all of you. So good morning, everyone. Welcome to the third annual Business Leaders Breakfast for Colby Academy. I am sad, John, that we don't have our hot breakfast, but next year, everybody will get vaccinated, we'll be together, we're looking forward to it. I'm really pleased that so many of you have taken time out of your busy day to learn more about the programs at Colby and how they are changing lives in a really positive and important manner every single day. As a recovery high school, their vision is to transform and restore the lives of students in recovery so they may fulfill God's plan for their lives. Now think about that. How important is that to help young people early in their lives to have the tools that can make their entire life more productive? This innovative program is building our future workforce and the leaders of tomorrow. And by building a solid foundation now, Colby is setting the students on the road to lifelong success. These skills they learn today will serve them well, they'll serve our community well, and they'll serve us well because they're our future employees. Now, when I ask employers what keeps them up at night these days, besides how are you going to get your workforce back to work after COVID, the answer is consistently that they are worried about where they will find people to fill the jobs that they have open. Where are they going to locate that workforce? And our business community needs reliable, dependable employees, people to work on their projects, to get things going, to have their businesses be productive. So thank you, Colby, for the work that you are doing to partner with your students to provide them with tools for success so that they can become our future employees. We need them. We need them sooner rather than later. And so I'm pleased to hear about what you're doing with the trades. And Gabe, congratulations on a year of sobriety. That is so awesome. Keep it up. So as part of our not-for-profit community, you, Colby, Colby Academy, you provide an important asset to the business community. And the not-for-profit community matters to the success of a business. Without a strong safety net in a community, it's almost impossible for a business to succeed. So the logical conclusion is that the support of the not-for-profit community is a key business principle 
that must be pursued with enthusiasm and commitment. That means we, the business community, need to support our not-for-profit community because we work together synergistically. It makes our community stronger together. So before we get further into the discussion of the importance of investing in our not-for-profit community, I'd like to share a quote from the letters of John Wesley. You've probably heard some pieces of this before, but I absolutely love this. It's simple and to the point. Do all the good you can by all the means you can, in all the ways you can, in all the places you can, at all the times you can, to all the people you can, as long as ever you can. All right, well, that's pretty straightforward. What a great way to think of giving back. Just do it all the time, everywhere, with everyone you meet. It's kind of a longer version of the golden rule, right? So why is it important for business to engage in the community? Why is it important to give back? You've got a business to run. Why does this matter? Well, first, business needs a strong community to support its success. From a strong infrastructure of transportation, schools, emergency services, and community safety, to healthcare and social services, business needs these services to be excellent and function well in a community. Imagine if, besides running your business, you also needed to worry about providing fire and emergency services or K through 12 education for your employees and their families. What if you needed to provide entertainment to them, the arts, community education development programs? Imagine if you needed to manage a food pantry or deliver health care while you're trying to run your business. It just is not possible. So when a community has a strong not-for-profit community and it's solid, business leaders like you, like me, we can focus on achieving our mission and know that we can recruit and support employees because the community is strong and stable. Not only does it remove the worry of those services from our agenda, but it also provides for a great foundation for recruitment. So we, the business community, can rely on the not-for-profit community to support all of these critical functions. All right, so that makes sense. The business needs the not-for-profit community. But secondly, the not-for-profit community needs business to be successful. It's not all or nothing. It's not black and white. It's not business is good, not-for-profit isn't, or not-for-profit is good, business isn't. We need each other. And why is that? Why does the not-for-profit community need business? A successful business not only delivers valuable products and services to the community, but more importantly, a successful business creates good paying jobs, provides volunteers, community leaders, and income to those individuals and to the company itself that can and should be reinvested in the not-for-profit organizations that provide the safety net and help the community grow and develop. And as all of you know, the Lehigh Valley is a perfect example of how these two concepts come together and why the Lehigh Valley is such a special place. In the Lehigh Valley, corporate engagement and support of the not-for-profit organization is table stakes not the exception, it's the rule. It's how we do business here. And it's why an event like today's can be so successful. We come together, we learn about an organization that's making a difference. And then in turn, we spread the word and we help support the mission and the vision of that organization. We all take both our businesses and our community seriously. And it's who we are in the Lehigh Valley. It's what we do. And it's ultimately why we continue to stand out when we're looked out from the outside. It's why we receive awards for best places to start a business, best places to retire, and why we are recognized by site selection organizations and companies that want to find the very best place 
to locate their business and to and so their employees can thrive. You know, when you look at national surveys about what's important to employees, salary and benefits is really low on the list. And what's high in the list is that they feel appreciated and they work in an in a location and a place that matters where they can feel important not only in the company and know that their work is respected, but also in the community that they serve. So what can we do? You all got on the call this morning. Thank you for getting up early and turning on your Zoom. What can we do to make our community even better? Well, first, take the call. Accept the invitation. Whether it's attending an event like today, playing golf in a tournament, sponsoring a gala, when an organization reaches out for your assistance, take the call, say yes, learn, invest. There's so many great things that we have in the Lehigh Valley. So when they reach out, answer the call. Second, contribute in any way that you are able and encourage your team members to do so too. Time, talent, treasure, or all three. Not-for-profit organizations love to have help from the business community. And not only is it helpful to that not-for-profit, it's a great development opportunity for your team members. So contribute, every little bit matters. Three, raise your hand, step up to the plate and take the lead. It is easy. People need you. Find a cause that suits your passion and ask how you can help. I can guarantee there are people out there that will not only accept your offer, but help you grow and you in turn help their organization grow. And finally, challenge your business and other businesses to give back. Reach out, invite your peers, spread the word. You'll be amazed at the power of your network and your ability to engage others in the support of valuable causes. People respect you. And when you put your name next to something else, to an organization like Colby, others will come along as well. Everyone has something to give. You all have been born with skills and talents that can help our community be strong. It's not just about money and naming opportunities. It's a big time multi-million dollar gift. Every little bit matters. Every dollar matters, every minute of time you spend, and every little piece of advice that you offer. It matters and you can make a difference. And together we can help one another and our community be an even better Lehigh Valley than it is today. So give yourself a round of applause. I can't see you. Pat yourself on the back. We totally rock Lehigh Valley. And it's because of all of you, the business leaders of the Lehigh Valley in partnership with the not-for-profit community. We are committed to greatness. You know, Jim Collins starts his iconic book, Good to Great, with a simple sentence. Good is the enemy of great. And I like to add to that, fine is the enemy of good. So let that sink in. It's easy to settle for fine or good, but we, the business leaders of the Lehigh Valley and the not-for-profit communities and organizations, we in the Lehigh Valley, we can't settle. Keep up the great work, strive for greatness and go the extra mile. Let's keep our Lehigh Valley strong and make it stronger by continuing to support our not-for-profit community and organizations like Colby. You can see they're making a difference and they're making a difference one person at a time. And that matters. Let's continue to support one another. It's what makes the Lehigh Valley a great place to live, work, and play. And it's our superpower. It's what makes us great. So I'll leave you with one more quote, and this comes from Betty Reese. And Betty said, if you think you're too small to be effective, you have never been in bed with a mosquito. 
I hope you are all laughing at that. Go out there and be effective. Thank you so much for coming out to support Colby Academy and have a wonderful day. Thank you. John, turn it back to you. And thank you so much. What a great message. And yes, as we like to say, and being that I'm using that mosquito quote you just had, um, we're small but mighty. And I think that that message is great and affecting one person at a time. Um, we can all do that. And you certainly have done that in your role in the Valley. So thank you so much for being here and, and for that great message. So, Thanks for having me. You know, last year, uh, nobody really knows this, but last year when we started the, the breakfast, uh, about quarter to, quarter to eight before the uh, breakfast started, um, an RCN truck rolled by on campus and we have RCN internet. And um, about 7.51, our internet went down and I was sitting right here and I, I yell over to my admin darling, I'm like, hey, do you have, is your email up? And she's like, let me check. She's like, no, I have to reboot. Well, our internet was down because RCM was working on campus and they had shut everybody's internet down and the breakfast was starting, of course, at eight o'clock. So literally I grabbed my computer grabbed my car keys. Luckily, I only live about seven minutes away, ran home, plopped on the dining room table. We started a few minutes late and we were good to go. And I thought, okay, nothing like that's happening today. No surprises. And then the boss shows up and they're knocking on my door. And I'm thinking, what the heck is going on? We're trying to be professional here, uh, but what a great surprise. So next year, I really hope like the fire drill alarm doesn't go off at our breakfast because two years in a row is plenty for me. So, but Anne, thank you again for such a great message. So thank I'd you. next like to introduce uh, some of our great volunteers. Um, I'm happy to share uh, a little thank you to uh, Brian and Wendy Calamar. Brian uh, is a member of our committee here for the last three years uh, for the business breakfast. Uh, very active in the community. Wendy, his wife, uh, works over at DeSales and she is on our board. She's been instrumental in the founding of the Colby Academy uh, on the initial board that put the school together. Uh, she near, now serves as vice chair of our board. Uh, following uh, Wendy and Brian, you'll hear from Winnie Halk, a, um, a, very, a veteran teacher from the Diocese of Allentown who has worked at several different schools, uh, but uh, is really passionate about what we're doing here at Colby, teaching uh, religion and English and is our special ed coordinator. So I um, hope you enjoy their message on why they support Colby Academy. I wanted to get involved with Colby Academy. Um, back in 2016, we lost my cousin Tyler Pavlinski to his addiction. And not even a year later is when I was approached by the diocese. And so when you lose someone, you know, so vital to a family like that, I, you know, you, you just want to do something. You want to help people. But there was no way to help. I didn't know how to help. And then the gift of Colby Academy was literally put in my hands. Well, when uh, Wendy told me about being on the board of directors and about the mission of the school, uh, two thoughts immediately came to my mind. Uh, the first was when I was in my kitchen several years ago and received a phone call. Unfortunately, that a very dear friend had unfortunately taken his life. He had been dealing with addiction for many years. And, and it, it was just a, a very touching moment. And, and, and the other time when Wendy and I were at the uh, Music Fest concert, I received a text, another very dear friend of mine, uh, unfortunately took his life. He was dealing with addiction, things like that. So this school is a compassionate, safe place, providing a great education. So we wanna support it in any way that we can. I think Colby Academy is so important because it's giving these students who are struggling so hard, so hard with addiction, um, a chance to transform their lives, to succeed, to finish high school. I mean, really, that's what they're here to do is finish high school, and they might not have been able to do that previously. I had the blessing to be able to be part of the committee that actually wrote the Colby Promise. 
And um, I wanna share that. I wanna read that to all of you so that you can hear what these students, what these faculty, what these staff, what our board members, what everyone promises to do every day. They say, as a member of Colby Academy, I will trust in God's plan for me. I will be honest in all that I do. I will be kind to myself and to others. I will have the courage to persevere. I will humbly know who I am, and I will openly accept God's grace each day. I think um, what's so important about Kobe is to the community. Um, like my wife just said, I think in some way we've all been touched. And again, myself uh, losing two close friends, Kobe hopefully helps restore and heal and get them healthy. Because the sooner you get that in an addiction, the better the long time process. And Kobe Academy provides such a great quality education, a safe, compassionate setting, great people that are there for the students. Colby Academy is so unique and, and so special from other institutions, other high schools, in that um, number one, the students can uh, practice their faith and, and faith is a very important part of this community. Pulls all of them together for one common purpose, to really let God lead them through this. Um, they have, as Brian mentioned, small class sizes. So they're not in a classroom with 50 other students, they're in a classroom with just a couple of students. So really they're known by name, they're known for their uniqueness, they're, they're known for what they bring to that classroom, um, which is so special here. They have wonderful, again, um, activities, that safe activities that they do after school. And just really, I, but the most special thing, really the faculty and staff that are here for these students, it really is a family. Colby is a family. And I just don't believe that you get that in a public school. Uh, the project that I truly enjoy being part of Colby is one of their two main fundraisers, which is this, is this project, the business leaders um, breakfast meeting. Um, we would love to have it in person, uh, we've been able, unable to do that for, unfortunately, the second year. But um, again, it's, a, it's, a, it's important for the school. It's a fundraising. It's a great group of people. We get business leaders throughout the whole valley to learn more about Kobe and the passion that, that it serves and the students. So it's one project I truly enjoy being involved in. Um, the projects uh, I love are some of the smaller ones too, where they just might come out of nowhere. Um, for instance, an Eagle Scout had done his um, project here for Colby. He created a, a basically like a butterfly garden, but all of the bricks that were sold, people could buy in memory of someone or in honor of someone. And so I was able to actually um, buy a brick for, for Tyler, for my cousin Tyler, and um, I'm actually, can't wait to see it and, and just to see the beauty of that. Also, the walk that they do. Um, Brian and I had a great time putting uh, in some miles to raise money for Colby. Um, I might have enjoyed that more than he did. But a lot of fun. <laughs> we did. We logged a lot of miles that way. So that's a good one. Keep an eye out for, for the walk next year. Um, and also just some of the um, after school activities that they do. Like we said, we were able to bring a chef in to teach them and um, just hearing about all the different um, activities. And, and the way they're coming is because of the community. People in the community are coming to do these things for these students. And I think that's the most beautiful thing. Like the Colby family isn't just in this building. The Colby family is the Lehigh Valley and beyond. And so we're really excited to see what continues to, to pop up. Um, I would encourage anyone out there to get involved with Colby. Um, as we know, our time, talent, and treasure are the things that we are supposed to be giving, right, as Christians. And um, I cannot think of a more valuable and, and a more beautiful way to share that than with Colby Academy. Whether you can give your time, maybe um, doing the walk, or your time you're giving right now being part of this breakfast is huge. Your talent, you know, is there something you know how to do that you can be one of those after school activities for the students? Um, and certainly treasure, you know, we, we always will accept and, and um, would be grateful for, for any amount or any assistance that anyone can give to Colby so that we can continue the mission, so that we can continue to help these students on their journey to healing, and so that we can continue to help them succeed. And, you know, like I said in the Colby promise, that, that's our promise. We're giving our time, talent, and treasure as much as we can, and we just ask that you pray about it and that hopefully you will do the same.
Engaging a student is coming to them at their level, respecting where they are, also respecting their recovery, where they are in their recovery, and always being compassionate. And our key word, flexibility. Here at Colby, we don't always have typical school days. There are times where you can tell the students are struggling. So I try to diversify. And one of the best responses I have gotten is when we perhaps, instead of going to the classroom, we come into the kitchen. We all get a cup of coffee or tea, and we have our class in the kitchen or the conference room. The ability to change our location it, it helps with their mental ability. It helps with their, their peace of mind. One of the things that the students really respond to and love are guest speakers. And the idea that their opinions and their thoughts matter, and they get to share those thoughts with us. We've had wonderful discussions and debates about different points of view. And one of our students, Travis, mentioned that he learns best by hearing what other people think and feel and then it processes for him and he shares his thoughts and feelings it's a completely different experience it is truly family it's not a regular classroom um, there is such camaraderie flexibility uh, between the staff the students the, the whole school is a family and it works together as a family. Well, some of the fun things that we have done have to revolve around food. We, we, we start with cheesesteaks in Philadelphia. Um, the fact that I'm proud that we were able to get a parking spot and enjoy you know, a, an amazing cheesesteak lunch in a park after a fabulous day at the art museum. Um, you know, being proud that I got into a go-kart, which I would not do even for my own children. Uh, I got into that go-kart and I also have a little concern. I'm thankful that my family is so supportive of me, but I noticed my phone is full of Colby students, not my own students, not my own family. <laughs> so it, it is just some of the greatest things of being out with them. I, I love bowling with them. I love competing with them. I love, you know, seeing their excitement when they try something new. I love when we're golfing. I get to experience it as well. If a family is coming through and you're, you're unsure, I think at this point in time, as a mother myself, there is no right answer. If there was some way to say, do this and everything will be okay, you would do it. I'm saying, give this a chance. We seem to prove our love and our compassion every day and our students respond to that. It's not your typical classroom. And they are learning beyond textbooks. They are learning social skills. They are learning interactions with their peers and healthy choices. Uh, one of the things I always say to my own children and I say to these boys as they're walking out the door, make good choices. So we are, we're making good choices. We're modeling that behavior as educators, as adults and we are a second family to them. So I would encourage you to come and, and try it and see it for yourself. Well, thank you, uh, Brian and Wendy. Um, they were uh, quite the comedic couple when they were uh, filming that, um, but their support has been just tremendous over the last couple of years. And, to our fabulous staff, Winnie Hauk, one of one of our great team members here. Um, her and I uh, enjoyed the go karts, but I don't know about her. I enjoyed getting out of the go kart more. I did more than I did getting in and driving in the go kart. So, uh, but fun times and and really great learning opportunities outside the classroom. So I'm really excited now to introduce you to one of our our, our outstanding students. Uh, Pete has been with us since last uh, last spring. He finished his freshman year with us and has been um, obviously uh, here during his entire sophomore year. And uh, Pete and his mom, me, are going to share their story of, of how they got to Colby and, and the successful recovery journey that he's on. So Pete, take it away. So, uh, 
in the deep in the throes of Peter's addiction, um, I hadn't, I didn't know that he was going through what he was going through, and we were always at odds. Um, a lot of door slamming, and um, at some times I was afraid of him, and I was never afraid of my son. And um, we, it, it was rare that we made it through a night without arguing and him running to his room and me not seeing him for the rest of the night. The drugs really made me like really um, angry on more of like the anger side of, of who I am. So anytime I would use, I would immediately get angry and very hostile and really t like, I don't know how to explain it, kind of just like take offense to everything that people were saying to me, so. <clears throat> I first heard about Colby Academy from my sister, Elena. Uh, she had met Mr. Petrozelli at a function and we were right in, the, Peter was in rehab and um, we didn't have anything to do. We didn't know where to go and she was quite upset and you know, somebody put Mr. Petrozelli in her path and he said, I have the place for you to go. And it's Colby Academy and um, here's my phone number and give my number to your sister and have her call me as soon as she gets it. And um, uh, my sister called me at about seven o'clock that night and uh, I think I called Mr. Petrozelli at 7.30 that night and um, just was, I was just put at ease and I knew that I had found the right place and Colby Academy was going to be our new family. First week, I mean, make it first day. I was obviously immediately felt welcome, so um, all the anxiousness and sadness kind of just went away and into the arms of everybody here. Colby Academy is a world, a new world sent from God in my eyes. Um, I had no idea that there was a, any kind of school like this, and I'm always mentioning this to Mr. Petrozelli that you don't realize that you need this school until you're at that lowest point with your child and you have nowhere to turn to. I think the decision that my mom made to send me here was uh, the best decision she's ever made in her life um, for her and for me. Um, it really, since when I came here, it just put a stop to all of the really gloomy mornings and walking into school in a bad mood and not wanting to go to school and you know now I wake up I come home from school and I'm looking forward to the next day already and I really thought that I would never look forward to school so um, yeah I think she made a great decision sending me here. To a parent who's just beginning this journey you're probably at the worst part of your life right now and you can't imagine that there would be a pathway that would lead you to the best part of your life and just driving up the road at Colby, that's the path. And um, Colby Academy just gives you the resources and the strength to know that you can make this through because you're not alone. Uh, you know, you have this new family and um, this family that will never turn you away, this family that won't let you get lost in the sea of people. Um, and this family that just really cares and wants your child to be the child that they they want to be. I think I think my mom's very proud of me, to be <laughs> honest. Um, I think I've came a long way and I think that a lot of other people can notice that I've definitely made improvement in my life in general. Um, I've always been the quiet kid and not talkative to other people. And ever since I came to the school, um, I've definitely stepped out of my shell a bit and um, meeting new people and talking more and interacting with people, so. I, I am so proud of, of this young man um, that Colby has helped strengthen and has given the tools to be proud of himself, more importantly. And just seeing his pride and the, and the way he carries himself now um, I can't, there's more, I, I'm, I, it's coming out of me, it's, it's bursting, I'm really bursting with pride for him. It's awesome, it's great. Thank you, Pete, thank you, Mia, what a, a great story, and 
you know, we live this every day and we hear these stories every day. And we're so happy that, number one, Pete, thank you for being brave enough to share that story. Uh, Mia, thank you for supporting Pete and supporting us and allowing us to be your partners in education because it's it's been a, a, an incredible experience having Pete and you as part of our community. And, and actually, I, I have my cell phone next to me and I'm so glad I looked at it because a friend of mine who is watching um, from outside down in Philadelphia texted me and he said, this is amazing stuff going on. He's like, I got a challenge for you. And this happened last year. Tony did this last year, second year in a row. A friend of mine just said, you tell everybody watching that I'm gonna donate up to a thousand dollars for anybody that makes a donation today. So he doesn't want me to give him his, give his name, but we have a challenge. Thank you. We were gonna put this up at the end. We're gonna put this up right now. Uh, thank you to my college friend that's watching uh, from outside of Philly. Uh, he's going to make a donation up to $1,000 for everything we get today in Pete's, uh, in Pete's honor. So Pete, thank you. And our friend, thank you. Um, and as you've heard this morning, if, if, if you can help us, that would be great. And if you can't help us, pray for us. Tell us, uh, you know, tell uh, other people about us. But uh, that's such a special gift. So thank you for that. Um, we've had a great morning and a few surprises. Uh, we're moving um, closer to nine o'clock, I think. And I know we want to get everybody out to work or out to the golf course, wherever you're heading next. Um, so let's turn it over to Travis uh, to say goodbye. Hi, my name is Travis. I'm a junior at Colby Academy. I've been at Colby Academy since January, and this has been one of the greatest experiences of my life. I have not been in a formal school setting for over two years, but now that I'm at Colby, I'm not worried anymore. I'm happy, feeling healthy, and I've made great friends. And I'm passing all my classes. It might sound weird, but your support today actually helps me. You're helping me get on a new path towards success. So on behalf of my classmates, thank you for attending this breakfast today. And thank you for supporting Colby Academy. Come visit us sometime. I would love to give you a tour. Now, I'll turn it over back to Mr. P. Thanks, Travis. And he means that. He gives great tours. All of our kids love it when we have visitors. Um, so if there's uh, ever a time you want to come and visit us, you know, COVID uh, caution, of course, we'd love to have you. So thank you for joining us. What a, what a great morning. I love the fact that I didn't have to rush home to my house, um, that I could just stay here in the office. Um, but my hope is that, you know, if what you heard today really touches your heart, we'd love for you to get involved in some way. Maybe you have... Um, a business that we can do some work study with or some career awareness with, or maybe you wanna come be a mentor. Uh, our hope is to start a mentoring program next year. So if there's something that you'd like to, to offer us, we'd love to sit and talk with you, love for you to come out. Um, please share our message and our mission with um, your friends, your colleagues. You know, as I said earlier, addiction is not just the disease of the person, it's the disease of the community and we're all affected. Very special shout out for uh, our committee, uh, Gloria Johnson, June and Frank Castellano, Mark Shank, uh, Brian Calamar, Darlene Ferry, Jessica Edris, Ari Kaminsky, Grady Barth. Thank you for your hard work on this committee. And if that's an interest you might have, if you'd like to join our, our committee for next year, please reach out to me. We are always looking to add more people to that committee and to our walk that we're gonna have in October, um, our, our recovery walk, it'll be virtual again. Um, so there are plenty of ways to get involved. So thank you again. Have a great rest of your Friday. On behalf of our staff and our incredible students, we are so grateful for your support, for you being here this morning. Thanks.